we're going to take a step back now to the blinds setup. Uh, we have already instituted the ability to set the amounts, and so now we want to actually determine who is going to be a small blind, big blind going forward in the game. Obviously, a key component to poker and gambling in general is the betting, and so we need to be able to handle taking in the bets from each of the players. So we're going to have a betting round, and then we want to make sure that all the bets are equal before we take the next step in the game. So that could be the call, the check, or the raise. So we want to cycle through what the players' bets have been. Obviously when we start, there will be a small blind and a big blind, and then it'll go through the rest of the players. So we want to figure out who the highest, or what the highest bet was, and make sure that they all are at the same amount. Now we can bump back up to the betting round method and determine which is the starting player to index through, cycle through that, and make sure that all bets are equal. And we will cycle through that list until all bets are equal. Obviously, if a player has folded, then we won't worry about their bet. So just like setting up a player, we will have the betting round handle all of the betting for each of the different players as it cycles through. So this will give us the print line statement, asking the player what they want to do. So we'll give them the options of folding, checking, calling, or raising. Now since a player can't call and check in the same round, we're actually going to add a little bit of logic to determine the state of the game and let the player know either they can check or they can call. A player will always only have three options.
and then we'll add in our scanner so that we can get that next token. And we'll do some more testing to make sure that what we've just coded actually does what we think it should be doing. So we'll add in some of our players. So we can see that it gave us the option to fold call arrays. And we can see that as we enter input that it will cycle through the list. So right here I'm doing a little bit of testing to make sure that the right index is being um, cycled through. Now I can remove all those print statements. So we're going to do a little bit of refactoring. So we're going to increase the current player index. If it gets to the end of the list, then we're going to have it change to the front of the list. So back to uh, index zero. So I just pulled out the logic so that we uh, have a while loop and it'll keep going through until all are equal, all bets are equal, but it'll run through at least once in that upper part. Now it's time to get working on the action logic. So for fold, it's pretty simple. Uh, a player is just set to not be in the game anymore. For a call, this will take the player up to the highest bid that has been made so far. So make a little bit of a supporter method, get highest bet, do a little refactoring, and then our all bets equal method can use that, and then so can our call. So now I want to determine what the difference of the highest bet and this player's current bet is. And then we can deduct that amount from the player's uh, bankroll.
lastly, we will just add this to the player's total bet for this round. The last action for us is the raise, and that is actually the combination of a call and then the ability to raise it to a, an amount that the player wants to raise it to. So in this method, we will ask the player what they want the new uh, bet amount to be. And then we'll actually have the player call, and then whatever the difference is, we will raise the bet amount to. And we go back up to the betting round and adjust to determine which of those three actions to handle for the player. And we just need to pass in the player for each one of those. So I'm starting to feel that the betting round method is getting a bit too long. And so we're going to separate that out a little bit. We're actually going to handle the individual bet separately. So we're going to take all of this inside this for loop, put it inside this betting or individual bet method, and then the individual bet betting round will uh, be able to just call that method and pass in the current player index.